quick stories. Um, I thought you guys might find this kind of amusing. Uh, uh, back in the 80s, and I don't want to say anything bad about Earl Scheib now because, you know, most of them are independently owned. owned. They don't use the same paint they used back then. In fact, Earl Scheib, the company, I think in 1992, dissolved. And, uh, you know, they're no longer there. But anyway, I got a comment earlier on Earl Scheib and I thought it was kind of brought back some memories. So I uh, wanted to go over a couple things with you guys. Um, I actually worked, I, I was working at a custom shop in Riverside. And uh, my boss came over to me because I was kind of screwing off a little bit. And it was, the, the custom stuff was kind of ending right at that point. There was a lot of mini trucks, you know, before that. And we weren't doing that many of them. So he walks over me and he goes, here hands me a hundred dollar bill and he says go get a real job <laughs> so that was kind of the end of the custom shop so in my bug behind my seat I had my skateboard I had my spray gun all the time and my sanders uh, in a crate sitting on my back seat and uh, why did I have my skateboard there well because the car broke down all the time you know stuff would happen break a throttle cable yeah, I don't know. Something you always had to have a, other means of transportation to get home. <laughs> so I always had a skateboard behind my seat. Plus I was a skateboarder and I liked to go, you know, skateboarding places and stuff. And nobody was really into it right then in the late 80s. It was kind of dead. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I was in need of a job and I had tried interviewing a lot of places. And, you know, a lot of places wouldn't hire a 20, 21-year-old guy um, who had been a painter for five years because they just look at you and go, how? There's no way you were a painter for five years, man. You're not old enough. I, you know, or, you know, I've been painting since I was, like, before I had a driver's license, you know. And they were like, no, no, there's no way. You know how to, you know, know how to do this stuff. So, and, you know, worked. Uh, it was like 21, 22 years old, I think, right in that point. And uh, so, and so uh, I went into, I saw an ad in the paper in Long Beach for Earl Scheib wanted a painter. And I was like, well, fuck, I know for sure that I could paint at Earl Scheib. And there's, I mean, I could paint anywhere really, but um, I was like, you know what, I'll just, I'm going to go talk to this guy and see if I can get the job. And the body shop manager was an Armenian guy. And he was really like, it was like, he was really cool. He was a really cool guy. I really liked him. And, uh, and he, the thing he used to say all the time, he was really good at, he would, people would come over and they'd go, well, I want a really nice paint job and this and that. And he'd go, excuse me, sir, this is Earl Scheib. We don't do that here. Oh, I thought you, I said, no, this is cheap. If you want a cheap paint job, you come to Earl Scheib. You want a good paint job, you go somewhere else, you pay a lot more money. If you want a cheap paint job, we'll do it for you. And that was basically how he handled everything. It was kind of funny. He had a heavy accent, but he was a really cool guy. And um, so anyway, I walked in and they said, okay, we're going to interview you right now. Um, and, he said, and I said, well, okay, there's no problem. I'm much experience. And he talked to him about experience. And he goes, okay, can you paint a car? And I go, yeah. He's like, well, I got this Triumph Spitfire over here. Um, I want you to paint it for me. And I said, sure, I'll paint it for you for free. Just so that I can show you what I do. I can do it. So I get in the spray booth. I sand the thing down real quick. It, it, the paint didn't look too bad that was on it. And I was like, what's wrong with this paint? It looks, you know, it look, I can make it look a lot better than this. But So I sanded the car down. And then I took it in the spray booth. Just sanded it down by hand real quick. And ran through it. And did a little bit of, you know, machine sanding a little bit. But not much. And then masked it off. Painted it, you know couple hours and uh, I go in the spray booth and I just and I go where's the paint and he goes okay it's, I got some paint right here just uh, go ahead and use this so I did this diamond gloss paint I mean it's just garbage paint and I just freaking sent I just sat there and just laid that sucker down and kept painting it just kept painting it until it just was just so smooth no orange peel I pulled the thing out of the booth 
And he goes, oh, my God, that is just amazing. It looks like these cars right here, you know. And I pull this thing out of the booth, and he'd never seen a paint job like this. I pull the thing out of the booth, and he goes, oh, my God, that is so beautiful. Oh, my, oh, man, we got a painter here. We got a painter. I said, yeah, yeah, I said, I've been doing this for years already. You know, I've, I work, you did body work and paint at my house since I was like 15, 16 years old. And so, so... <laughs> So I go, so he goes, okay, well, just put the rest of the paint over there, you know. And I go, well, I already used all of it. He goes, oh, my God, really? This is a, this is a small car. You can't use that much paint. I said, well, that's how you get it to look like this. You got to put it on heavy. And he goes, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. But you can still paint here. And... You can still have the job. We want you to work here, and, and, and you you can really paint a good job. So he talks talks to his boss, and they said, "Well, look, it can, you, you know, here's how you get away with this. You know, the the regional manager and all this stuff." And at that time, Earl Scheib was owned by the mafia. the 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 guy came over, you know, the owner came over in his like Cadillac, like a uh, stretch limo with a driver. You know, and he's Italian, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was really, it was a little scary. I mean, it was like, hey, you know, it was like this really guy with a, you know, a bulge in his, in his uh, jacket, you know. <laughs> Comes out, you know, driver, his driver, you know, had a bulge in his jacket. And I was like, holy crap, what is going on here? This is just like, oh, my God, I'm just going to go hide in this spray booth. And they didn't want me to meet him and everything and all that stuff. And so, it was, but it was pretty scary, that part was. And then. So this Hispanic guy comes over and he comes over and he has a Trans Am, black Trans Am. And uh, so he comes up with this black Trans Am. And literally the car was sanded uh, with a grinder. He used like a 24 grit on a grinder. It sanded the whole car down with this or something, you know, maybe it was 80 grit or something. But it had swirl marks from the grinder all over the whole car. And the guy's saying in Spanish, and, you know, the body shop manager didn't speak any Spanish. And I spoke some Spanish because you know, even now, you know, if you work in a body shop, you have to speak some Spanish, you know. And, he's, and, I, and so the guy says to him, I want, this guy says, negro, negro. And I go, dude, you want it black? You know, I'm like going, negro? And, you know, Spanish, the caro is negro. And he says, it's no bueno aquí. And I'm showing him all the stuff. That's, and it's no good. You can't paint this car black. It's going to look like crap. No, no, no. It's okay. I want it black. And so the manager's like, oh, my God. This guy wants this thing black. Yes, I took this car in the spray booth. And I got it done. And it looked like shit. I mean... I was painting the car and I kept laughing so hard while I'm painting that I had to stop painting. I, I, I couldn't even paint it because it would look like crap. I mean, it was just awful. And this, and, and I'm going, oh my God, this guy is just going to not like this thing. He comes and he comes over and he goes, oh, it's great. I love it. <laughs> I'm just going, wow. <laughs> I've never worked for people like this. I'm used to people going, oh, my God, you know, what about this little thing right here, you know? Oh, well, you know, I got to repaint the whole car over that. You know, you're like, oh, man. You know, and that's the way everybody was in the custom shop, you know. So so I was just, and, and then I, I, you know, so that was another paint job I did. It's funny, I remember all these paint jobs. This was a long time ago. And... Uh, but there was more of them that I don't remember, I know for sure. Because, I mean, I painted six, seven cars a day or something like that. And you had to paint about one an hour to, to make any money because it was only $119 for a paint job. And, you know, it, that wasn't much money. So and it's, it, part of that went to paint. I don't think they paid much for that. They probably paid about $15 for a gallon of that garbage paint they used. They didn't even have reducer or anything. It was, that was already reduced. The gallon of paint was already reduced in the, and it, I don't know, it smelled like lacquer and enamel mixed together. It was kind of weird stuff. I don't know what it was. And 
So anyway, um, this guy comes in and he has like a, I don't know, it was a, like a blue Buick LeSabre or some, uh, it was like, or a Chevy Malibu or Nova. I can't remember. It was something like that. It was a full size Chevy or GM car. And it was silver and he wanted it repainted silver. And their silver was so awful. It, it was like 90% binder, which is clear and a little bit of metallic in it. And so I talked to him, I go, Dude, this just like doesn't cover. I tried to paint some of the, it had like voids in the paint, you know, where, where it was sanded through and stuff. And the, it, and there was no clear back then, you know, on most of the cars. Uh, GM didn't put clear on their cars back then, so they weren't very shiny. And the, uh, you know, it was, it was sanded. You could see the black primer underneath, you know, and a lot of the hood and sides. So um, I talked to him, and he goes, he goes, well, you can use all the sealer you want. And I'm like, oh. And I talked to him, and he says, I talked to the regional manager, and he says, one of the guys mixes sealer with the paint. <laughs> I'm just going, what? <laughs> Mix sealer with the paint? Okay, I'll try it. You know, so I take this silver and I mix it with some sealer and shot the, you know, just dusted the thing to try and cover this and went over all the bad stuff with this uh, sealer and paint mix. And then I, and then I figured out that you could only, there wasn't enough paint to put more than one coat on a car. So, and, and this is what the guy was explaining to me. He goes, oh, no, you have to do this all in one coat. And I mean, I'm like used to, you have to do your first coat and you have to let it dry a bit. And then you hit your second, third, fourth, you know, fourth coat on. I'm used to doing three to four coats. And so I, you know, you put your first coat on too heavy and it'll run and stuff. So you have to, you know, master this dusting method. And so what we had to do is I had to open the door. Of course, you know, overspray is going inside the car. No problem. Back then we didn't have HVLP. It was high pressure spray guns and, and, um, and they, you know, it, it it made a huge cloud. If you like, you couldn't paint inside a garage. I mean, you got painted inside garages, but it would just really just fill a garage up with overspray. Even today, you know, if you try and paint without a booth, it's you know you, you can't see after a while. So you have to open up the door. Okay, start. I think it was uh, it was actually you started on a quarter, and you worked your way around the car, and you worked your way around because you end up with a huge dry spot with this stuff because it was it would dry so fast. So you'd kind of dust it on, just kind of double layer it on, and you'd go around the car, and you'd go all the way around, do the roof and everything else, and then when you got to the back, all the way around the car, and you got back to the door, you'd kind of open the door up again. Of course, overspray's jumping on the roof, and it looked like sand, and just that's the way it was okay that way. And so then you paint the door last and open it up so you didn't have a huge dry spot in the quarter. <laughs> that's what that's what the guy was the manager was telling me. That's how the other guy did it. So <laughs> I paint this guy's car, you know, this thing, and man, you can just literally see just like mapping, you know, this giant, you know, black, you know, like you could see right through the paint. You could see the old, you know. And I looked a little bit better than it did. Not much. And the guy comes over and he's looking at his car and he goes, Hey, uh, what about this stuff? And he goes, and the manager just looks at him and he goes, He goes, Hey, what do you expect? It's real shy. <laughs> I was just like, Whoa, are you kidding me? He just said that. Oh my God. This guy just said, this is Earl Scheib. And, he, and the guy goes, well, what about this stuff? And he goes, this is Earl Scheib. You, we don't do that here. If you want to get the through the premium paint job, you know, $450, we can make that look better. But for the 119 that's what you get. And the guy goes, oh. And, you know, the guy paid him, got in his car and left, you know. And it was funny. As long as they got away with that, people just kept 
doing it because I mean, it was 119 bucks. I mean, how, how could you paint a car for $119? So, um, trying to think of the other stuff I was thinking of that was just blew me away, you know. And I remember, I literally remember going in the spray booth every day and, oh, that was what I was going to say, uh, every day and just laughing to the point where I almost just had to run to the bathroom sometimes and go, I mean, I just literally would be painting something and you're just going, oh my God, I can't believe I'm making this thing look this bad and somebody's actually going to pay for it. And it was just funny because I worked at home when I was younger and, you know, a guy would go, hey, I can go to real shy. And I go, oh man. And then you go, or, or you could paint it for 120 bucks. And back then I would do it. I'd paint it for $120. I'd put three coats on and I'd be like, oh man, I hope this guy likes this thing, you know. And, you know, back in my garage back years ago, um, and, and I mean, and the guy would go, oh man, that looks really good. Or they'd be picking stuff apart and I'm going, what, you know. They didn't realize how bad it was if they went to Earl Scheib to get their car painted back then. It was really, really, really horrible. Um, but one thing, this is so, what ended my experience with Earl Scheib was after a week um, of working, you know, and I, I've had fun. I was going to, I was just going to stay there for another, I didn't want to stay there forever, but I was like, hey, I could work here for another couple months. This is fun. I mean, it was just like, it was just like you could do anything and nobody cared. So it was like, yeah, you could just make a big fat run in the fender. And guys would just come over and go, hey, what's this? And the manager would go, hey, it's Earl Scheib. That's what you get. And it used to say, no drips, no runs, no errors. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that was their motto. And so so any anyway, you could just do whatever. You know, just you couldn't make the paint run very easy. It was really, really, it was, it was so... It was like painting with lacquer paint back if you guys have ever painted with lacquer. Um, it's really hard to get a run in it, but it was enamel. So it was kind of like this fast drying enamel and it came in metallic paints and it was their own brand and it was just totally garbage. But anyway, uh, so what ended my experience with Earl Scheib was I came into work and the manager goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I really like you, but... The guy is like the cousin of the owner or something like this, you know. It was like, and, you know, I guess he owed him drug money or whatever. I don't know. And he goes, I, it's not beyond, it's out of my hands. But um, you're going to have to, uh, the, I have to give the job back to the guy because he came back from his drug hiatus. And I think the guy looked like he was on, I mean, Heroin and meth at the same time. The guy looked really weird. And I was like, wow. And he was like, because I was like the only normal person there. The body man, you know, it was so funny. And the body man was there. And I see this this guy, you know, he, he just grabbed this slide hammer. And he, and, and he just, and, and he would take a punch, okay? There would be a dent, say, right here in the car. And he'd take a punch and he'd just punch hole, bam, 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 with a punch. And then he'd take a slide hammer, he'd screw it in and go, Wham, 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 and he pulled the slider, a, a big old hole in it, you know, just rip it right out, and he'd just knock it down with his hammer. And then he'd take another one, he'd screw it in there, and he'd go, wham, 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 and he'd pull it out, you know. And then, and I was like, dude, what'd you get for that dent? And he goes, oh, 50 bucks. That's all they get, you know. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, $50, man. I used to do a whole. You know, a whole hood and, and fenders and stuff for 50 bucks at my house, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God, really? And, and I go, oh, you're going to grind it to bare metal? He goes, nah. And he'd just take Bondo and he'd just throw it right over the paint. And then there, and he would sand it like a little bit. Uh, he, I don't think he even had a grinder or a hand sander or a, a machine sander. I think he had a machine. He had a DA. But he did a lot. It was just like he'd just leave it. And you could just see, literally see the mountains of, uh, uh, you know, of the spreader still in the Bondo. And he'd send it over to me to paint. And I was just like, oh, my God, you know. There was, he was fixing this whole big fender, you know, it was on a regular car. 
this round square fender, and he just uses a slide hammer and just a punch, and you just punch a hole in it, and you just, wham, and you see a <laughs> big old mushroomed, uh, uh, you know, a slide hammer like this one. So I said, you know, you don't really need one of these. <laughs> these things, they sell the dent puller, you know, this thing. He just take this thing and he just, just he just pop a hole in the side of it, pull this dent out, and you know, I, people paid for it. They actually would pay, and you know, I just thought it was fascinating. You know, it's just just this car looks like, and I remember painting some of these things, and that they used primer on. They say put primer over it, so I actually got to, I go, well, should I block this out? You know, so I kind of. <clears throat> try and block it out a little bit and the manager liked that I did that you know because the other guy didn't you know he just paint he'd primer it he'd hit a little hand sand on it and it was like hose it done that's what they got and uh he goes oh wow you do a much better job than the other painter and all you know all their prep and stuff and I I didn't really sand I didn't have much time because um I had a there was a helper guy that came around I think and he would, oh yeah, the other thing they did oh, is they gave me, and I go, okay, so, okay, I'm ready to mask off this car to paint it. And so, and I go, I go okay. he goes, okay. So I go, where, where, where's the masking machine? And he goes, masking machine? We don't have one. Here. And he throw me today's paper. He well, I'm done with the paper, it's okay. He throw it on the, he throw a, 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 you know, the paper, newspaper, on the hood, and he, you get one roll of three quarter inch tape. So literally that's not enough. You needed like two to three rolls to do a real complete masking. You know, back then we'd mask off all these things here. You know, you didn't take it off because you didn't have, you didn't get paid for that. So you just tape everything off, you know, all the emblems and everything. Heck, I'd run out of, out of, out of uh, tape about halfway through masking. so. Um, so I trying to figure out which things I could just paint. So if it had an emblem like this, that sucker got painted. There was no way you just didn't have enough tape to do that. Um, like all this stuff, we just paint them, paint them, paint it, you know, and then half the time I'd run out of tape, even on all the rubber for the windows. And I just have to use a piece of cardboard and hold it on there. And then and just paint it and then the manager would be out with a gallon of lacquer thinner outside the booth cleaning the windows off <laughs> whatever whatever he would do and just kind of clean everything off a little bit and he'd sell the job you know he'd be like okay here's your here's your car and the guy's like well what, there's paint on the window he go hang on a second yeah get that off okay all right there's your car and they go and they go well what about this here he goes no i'm sorry this is real shite we don't do that here it was just the guy who just had a routine that every time the guy came, the answer was, no, this is real shy. We don't do that here. That's what you get for 119 bucks. <laughs> it was, and you know, literally we were going through six to 10 cars a day. I think I want to say I worked at one day for one day and we did that place did the, the painter in there was like, geez, he, yeah, that guy did like, 12 cars a day you do one every 20 minutes and he made them look like this they look good I mean, they came out it was like wow and i was like dude how do you do that all day you know and he was a mexican guy and he was, oh, he was, i see him in the three with him just whoa, 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 just like this just going at it so fast and and just dusting it over and over until it looked good and then they come out of the booth and i saw one come out of one day and it had a little run like right here in the corner i mean it's like that's nothing. Sand that out, buff it. Manager goes, oh no, no, we have to put that back in the booth, paint it again. This is no charge. Do it again. Do the whole car. I was like, wow. But it was that was in uh, oh god, um, Costa Mesa. So, but I worked there one day, and I said, man, if, hell no. I didn't even go back the second day. I was a spot painter. I was in the other side of the shop, and they were just slave drivers. I was like, hell no, this sucks, you know. And then, then I got another job. And finally, somebody uh, through the job I got finally was I got through the uh, paint store. That's where you get 
if you wanted to, if you ever want to do this stuff and you want to work as a helper first, um, you go to the paint store and then the paint store will get you in to a body shop. And that's how finally I did. I mean, I could, I tried through the paint store at first and it was taking a while and taking a while. I just needed a job. So I took work that real shy. And then I told my paint rep, oh yeah, hey, um, he goes, oh no, no, no. He goes, I can, I can get you a job tomorrow. I'm like, really? He got, we got, there's got a couple guys that got openings. So high tech took me on and I was working there for a while as like the second painter. They had two painters in one shop. So, um, that was a big shop that now they're, I don't think they're owned by one of those other big companies now um, who does, uh, some, what's that place called? The big collision center. And uh, they're all over the place, but I think they're owned by them. But anyway, so that's my Earl Scheib painting experience. Um, you back in the old days, man, it was awful, awful, awful stuff. So, you know, when I hear today, I don't want to say anything. Don't take this in today's light. I don't know what they do today. This was back in the 80s when it was corporate owned, and they're not corporate owned now. They're independently owned. And now... From what I understand, I don't think you can buy the, anything close to the garbage that we were putting on cars. It doesn't, they don't meet VOC uh, regulations. So the good thing about that is you can probably even go to a place like that and get, you know, if you did your own prep, I wouldn't trust their prep maybe. Um, you could probably get a decent paint job. So. I mean, I, I'm not going to say, I don't really know, but I mean, just far as your uh, decent, cheap paint job, not, I've seen some stuff from my neighbor got his car painted at Mako and, um, he took it over there and, and he goes, cause he asked me if I do, I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't paint anybody's cars. I only do my own. So he goes, he goes, oh yeah, yeah. He took it over to Mako and they charged him 300 bucks. He goes $300 and they go. And, 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 you know, it was like $300 was their base paint job. And he goes, oh, I want the base paint job. And they go, well, you want the body work done? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I want the body work done. And they go, well, for doing all the body work and everything, it was like 2500 bucks." And he's like, oh, well, I just want the base paint job. He goes, the base paint job, all this stuff here in the hood, everything is going to just show up. All we're going to do is just sand it real quick and paint it. And that's it. He goes, that's fine. And at least it'll look better than it does. And I mean, it looks like crap. I mean, it looks tort really bad. So anyway, that's, um, you know, you, you gotta do, you gotta spend the money. You're not going to get somebody to do, um, work for free. That's just not, it's just a lot of work to paint a car. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of sanding, a lot of priming, a lot of stuff like that. Not like painting a house, you know, back in the old days, we could just scuff them down and paint them. And, you know, with the, with the materials they had back then, um, like at one day, that's all they did, and it turned out pretty good. Well, actually, they machine sand everything, and then they would hand sand it after that, and spot prime a couple of things, and you then it was painted for. Um, I think it was oh, it was like twenty dollars more than Earl Scheib, so it might have been one forty nine ninety five or something like that. So it was worth spending the extra money. But anyway, that's my experience with Earl Scheib and the cheap days back in the old days. So you guys can. If you ever heard the old stories, um, that's how it really happened. I actually worked there. Not many people did, but I did.